Good evening, surprise. This is Monday night, and all of our church people are supposed to have be having their family night. So I thought we'd have a family setting. And although we don't have any food here, we have the bread of life we're going to open to you. But we're having this special one-time Monday night Facebook thing because we hear that there are new people that are joining us and they want to know a little bit more of us and then they want to know what this is all about and what we're doing. And so for those of you who are new, I want to welcome you and say that I'm Pastor Barbara from the Faith in Jesus Church and my last name is Tin Gun. Okay. So you'll remember that. But uh, we're so glad to have you here, and I know that some of you send in some questions, and I hope I'll be an able to answer some. But for the rest of the week, this is our schedule. We're going to do a one-hour program tonight. Tomorrow night, which is Tuesday night, our discipleship night will be also one hour long, and you can send in your questions Wednesday night is our regular church services healing night. And so we will dedicate to praying for the sick and praying for the brokenhearted and all those that need healing in their body, soul, and spirit. And that's usually a half an hour, but we'll see if the Lord leads us to have an hour program because there are healing needs. We will do that too. Our time is the Lord's. And we're so glad to be able to serve the Lord in this way. Then Thursday night is a regular um, night for the ladies. I love ministering to the ladies because I've been a lady all my life. Well, I was a girl young, when I was younger, but I know how they feel and, you know, the ups and downs of uh, our lives. And uh, I love to minister the word. I've been ministering to ladies for a long, long time. And then I was praying this morning as uh, things started to happen, questions started to come in. And I know that many of you are in a place where you're trying to get help to get your life together, but you don't want to go back into your old lifestyle. And so I'm praying for your family, your husband, your children, your parents perhaps, because I want them to come to know Jesus as you are coming to know Jesus because it will be very difficult for you to have this wonderful relationship with God as so many of you are having and then go back to an old situation where they don't understand you and so forth. Because I believe in this world we need more godly families. And God made Families. That was his original idea. That was his first social unit. He created Adam and Eve, and he says, you know, replenish the earth with children. And so that is what God's plan is. And we see a lot of broken families now because of the pressures of the life we're living. And so it's my joy and privilege to help you get back on track because a lot of you are admitting to me that you didn't know any better. And you tried this and that, and you didn't know that Jesus was so available. In such a night, we're going to do some things to introduce you to Jesus, who wants to be your friend, your savior, your lord, your king. And you're going to find a lot of pleasure in that. Okay, so what I've been telling people who tune in to especially the programs that are directed to helping ladies is that I'm not trying to get people to join my church, although... We have room for a lot more people. And we would love if you don't have a church to come here. But I want you to know that God placed us in families. And here, we really operate as a family. And we teach people to love one another, to tolerate one another, to be patient with one another, be kind to one another, like you know how mom and dad used to tell us, OK? So the church is a family. And most of us are born into a cultural religion, and many of your questions are saying, out of my religion, I didn't know, you know, how God could help me, it meant nothing, and I went through some rituals and so forth, and so I just want to explain that, uh, you know, we're not trying to recruit you to join our church, but we really want you to have a born-again experience, because that's what the Bible says, so 
anytime I teach something or somebody shares something here and you cannot find it in the Bible, you have a right to question us. And so for those of you who come from other faiths, I want to ask you this question. Are you satisfied with your faith? Do you know where you came from? Has it given you purpose for this life? And after this life is over, do you know where you're going? Because in the Christian faith, it's a relationship. It's not really a religion. Although we worship, we have songs, and we have formality, but it is more teaching us to have a relationship with the God who created us, the God who had a plan. We believe that the Bible is a roadmap for this life. It had a beginning. Christianity studies the Bible, lives by the Bible, and it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So if you don't agree with that, that's fine, but keep your mind open and make it an option. Because when we go through all of these lessons, I want you to compare what you have and perhaps will consider coming and giving your life to the Lord because you have felt God drawing you here. And most of you are tuned in tonight because you feel that. And it's my privilege to do that. So those of you who have questions, just write in your questions. And what I do is I juggle them together in topics. So I may not take your particular question by itself, but I'll try to. Uh, cover it, and if I don't do it, you know, on one night, I'll continue and do it on the next night. But the Bible is our book. We put our faith in the Bible. And so what we did was we, by faith, received Christ, as the Bible said we should, and then we started learning about the Bible. And for those of us who have been in Christ, you know, we have learned through personal experience that it works. Every promise that God made in the Bible works. So uh, this is why we study it. Tonight, I'd like for us to just bow our heads in thanksgiving to God. Are you thankful that we were not hit by the hurricane? You know what was so funny is when they said it was supposed to hit Maui at, I think, 2 p.m. yesterday, I went out and it took a live video. And I had a lot of my mainland prayer warrior friends praying for us. And I said, look at the hurricane on Maui. And my plants were hardly moving. And there was just a light mist. Although when the cars drove by, it kind of swooshed, swooshed, swooshed. But I said, this is an answer to your prayer. I am videotaping a miracle because you prayed. God heard it. And so we are thankful to God. And then during the night and in the morning, I was listening to the news and I was praying for my friends from Kauai because we had people from Kauai ministering last night and we were praying for Kauai because it seemed like, you know, Kauai was going to have a direct hit. And then, you know, about midnight, I think they said it had bypassed Kauai. And then I taped, I was waiting for the weatherman to say something. And you know what? All of them said in different ways, we don't know what happened. We've got to study some more. You know, they had wind bands that's supposed to be 150 miles, and even if we didn't have a direct hit, we we're going to have the winds and we we're going to have the rains. It came like 20 to 25 miles from the islands, and nothing happened. We got to study the terrain more. I want to say hello. Do you know that there were probably thousands of people taking the authority in Jesus' name across these islands and rebuking that storm? Oh, we see it over and over again. And the, the reason why I'm so fired up about studying the Bible because of things like this, and the more people we have praying, the stronger our prayers would be and we will be able to move bigger mountains. Now, somebody asked me about COVID. Can you explain COVID? What is happening? What about these end times? It's kind of scary. Well, never before has the world come to a standstill. Never before has everybody everywhere wearing masks. And you know, I don't want to scare you who are new, but it's all in the Bible. And when you have a roadmap, 
You know how to maneuver around these things. And when we study the word of God, we don't walk in fear because for everything that's going to happen on this earth, for whatever reason, we are safe in Jesus Christ. Totally safe. That's why you'll hear me say, stay in the center of God's will. Stay in the center of God's will, you know, because that's the safest place to be. So let's thank the Lord and praise him and not take a blessing like that for granted. Father in heaven, we are so thankful that we are your children. We're so thankful that you put us in families. Oh, I had so many kind people to cut down my trees and, and, and secure my property. And we need each other. But more than that, we need you because you're the orchestrator of everything. And you said, if my people will humble themselves and repent of their sins and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. And so, Lord, we thank you for hearing us. Thank you for sparing us because you're merciful and kind. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And we love you very much, Lord, more and more every day because we're seeing your wonderful love for us. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One of the um, questions, a lot of these questions are by people who have been in the gay lifestyle, okay? And, uh, and it's because you're listening because of the programs that you're in that encourage you to listen to us. And, and because of your situation, many of you are telling us that you were forced into a relationship like that. And of course, you know, when we you say that God wants to deliver you, it's something different from what you may have been told in school or by doctors or psychiatrists and whatever. But as we said, we go by the word of God, the Bible, and we've got to go by, by what the Bible says. I remember early on, one person that was trying to get out of the gay lifestyle said, you know, I called four churches and they said, it's okay. So why are you saying it's wrong? And so I said to, I'll give you the scripture, and I will give you the scripture, because if it's not in the Bible, you can do whatever you want. But when I was explaining to this person, and I said it, I think, three or four times already, because there's so many new people coming in and wanting deliverance from that, I said, you know, I am only like the person putting out the road sign, like on Hana Highway when we have torrential rains and there are landslides and it's dangerous. So I put up the sign that says, danger, do not proceed because of the landslides. Are you going to get mad at me for putting up the sign? Are you going to get mad at the sign because it's so don't proceed because of danger? And that's what I see myself doing, steering everybody to eternal life in heaven and not by what I think, but by the word, what the word of God says, because in the end, when this is all over, and the Bible says there is going to be the end, yes, we are beginning to see the end. The Bible says when you see these signs like pestilences and earthquakes and violence and shakings, that's a sign that Jesus is coming again. But let me tell you, beloved ones, that's why you're listening tonight. God in his mercy made you curious. God is in his mercy wants you to hear. Maybe you never heard God's plan. You didn't know that God loves you. And so somehow, and all of the roadblocks in your life and the detours and all the hurts in the valleys, you've come to this place tonight because Jesus wants to rescue you. So I'm going to read that scripture, but let me tell you this, that, you know, homosexuality is not the worst sin. It's like any sin. And when we read the scriptures where God tells us it's wrong, he also lists all the other sins. So those of us who are not homosexuals, we cannot look down on any homosexual. Because I told you before I became converted, my pet sin was lying. You know, we don't have many sins. Most of us have one favorite one that keeps tripping us up, and we need to ask the Lord. I had one of the ladies tell me that today, 
I, I was filled with the Holy Spirit, but I, I swear my language is bad. You know, I know that all of us have something that God needs to clean up, so be patient with yourself. And I gave her Psalm 1914 to memorize. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my God, and my salvation. You just pray that. Pretty soon you're going to find yourself, you didn't even trip over that. Okay, so be patient. You're not going to be a grown-up overnight. Those of you who are newly born again, the Bible says, as newborn babies, desire the sincere milk of the word. You know how babies are. I mean, it is really like a family. When you're born again, you're born into God's family. And so he's got rules for his children, not like the rules of the world. That's why it doesn't work, and that's why people who are still in the world don't understand us. But he gives us himself to come in us. And we're going to be talking about that. But, you know... We just thank God that we are trusting in him. I just want us to pray for peace. Father, there's so many people that are searching for you, but you're not lost, and you're calling them. And so open our minds and our hearts to receive that word tonight and personalize the word to everyone. We give you thanks for your mercy and grace for protecting us. But help us to know that every day, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And every day, you're going to be with us. So we give you thanks and praise. Amen. Well, I invited somebody that you already know, some of you, because you've been ministered to. She became a Zoom star, I heard. Uh, some of you from the other islands wanted to ask questions and Carol DeMello was on Zoom. So, Carol, you can come up and help me. And we have uh, Jimmy Eno. Uh, he gave his testimony one Sunday night. But uh, I wanted him to come and help me read the scriptures and also share a little bit about his testimony. And uh, I'm going to ask him first to read from Romans chapter 1. And if anybody asks you where in the Bible... Does God say that homosexuality is wrong? It's from Romans chapter 1. So that's kind of easy to remember. But, you know, I want both of these to listen to this testimony that was written somebody, by somebody who gave their heart to Jesus just this morning, I believe, right? And she had been in the environment where Carol's been ministering, and uh, she was an observer for I don't know how long, but she insisted, two months almost, and she insisted today after she received the Lord as her personal Savior and was born again, she says, I want Pastor to read my testimony today. So I'm going to read the testimony, but I want my church people to hear, because so many of us are so sheltered. When I first started to minister to um, people, in this area, I was shocked when Carol came to me, and that's how it started, uh, and she told me her story. I did not know that things that awful happened on Maui. But here's another one, okay? And I want your heart to listen. Maybe this is not your story, but the reason why you need to be born again it's because there are people around you that may be hurting and don't know that Jesus loves them, you know? And those of you who have children, you know, you have gone through a life of heartache. Do it for your children. Break the curse of heartache and pain. Change your life and model for your innocent children a new life so that they can know the love of Jesus but listen to the sad story, and I'm going to kind of try to uh, improvise a little bit because I don't want her identity to be known or her background much. But she said, all my life, I was a black sheep in my family and in school. And over and over, I was told, I'm a mistake. 
I felt almost like they sold me for sex. What I mean by that, my father, because I felt he hated me, he would force me to have sexual activities with his friends, and he would get paid. Now, everyone must be wondering in your minds, why didn't authority step in? I was threatened, and I tried once and got beat up. After all of that, I hated my life, myself, and I didn't care if I lived or died. So I chose to be gay because I felt like that was the answer. I was born and raised in a particular church, but I knew nothing about God. It was almost like a robot going to church, kneel, stand, learn nothing. I went to my pastor at that time and told him what was going on and he told me I will pray for your family so I felt like he didn't know how to help me so he offered just prayer I left the church and never went back I always felt so empty like there was something missing I felt maybe the gay life was what was missing I always felt so depressed empty no self-worth, and that no one loved me. I remember on Sunday, I think I said, as I was preparing our service for Children's Sunday, and we we're going to celebrate children, I, I just felt like hearing some of these stories that some people, as old as they are, they're adults, had never heard one person not even their mom or dad, because sometimes their parents died young in an accident or something, and they were taken to foster home and foster home. Not one person, Jimmy, ever told them mm. that they loved them. And I know your dad. He was a Japanese dad, but he was really a Christian dad. We are not Japanese when we get born again. We are Christian. It changes us. Do you know that Jimmy's dad would kiss all of his children whenever they had to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. No, can you imagine a Japanese dad doing that? But he would. Why? Because he loved Jesus, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, when I read this, I, I just can hardly get through it because evidently this precious one had probably never heard anybody say, I love you. Mm -hmm. Or she went to church and never heard anybody mm -hmm. say, God loves you. Mm -hmm. How sad it is to go to church and not know that he knows your name. People, he knows your name. Mm -hmm. He was there when you were conceived and you were put into your mother's womb. And as painful as your family has been, your life might have been, God put you there for a reason to make you the person he is now rescuing. Because out of our pain, we can do great things things for God. Amen. You can do great things for God. You know Carol's testimony and how she's helped others. But let me continue. She said, I was depressed, empty, no self-worth, and that no one loved me. I got into a relationship with my girlfriend for 10 years. It was almost like a repeat in my life. She constantly played me between me and her ex, running between me and her ex. She told me one day, you listen to me. I'm your boss. Treat me like your God. I thought to myself, I never knew much about God, and you're my God? She mentally abused me. She isolated me. I couldn't go out. I couldn't have friends. Then she started beating me smashed me against the wall, punched my face, broke almost all my top teeth, so I'm angry because at my age, I had to get false teeth. I hated the head games, embarrassed of the way I look. Finally, I said, I'm out of this life and this world. I took a whole bottle of Vicodin, something like that. Next, I knew I was in I see you fighting for my life. But I remember someone came in three or four times a day 
had her hands over me praying. When I looked back, it was like an angel. The nurse told me at Maui Memorial there was a pastor that came to pray with me. I know who that was to say thank you. I got better, received counseling. Before my counseling was complete, I told my girlfriend, we are done. She told me, I'm changed. I still love you. So I went back to her. I felt something pulling me and saying, be still. I never knew what that meant and felt like I was hallucinating. Finally, com I completely left her a month and a half ago, and I came to a safe place. Something strange was happening in this new place. And she said it felt like a church. I felt a calming spiritual spirit. Then I met one of the leaders. I looked at her, what is this all about? She shared about how God loves me, gave me everything and my salvation and a lot more. I then started to listen on the Facebook Live to our program. I started to feel peace and comfort, but did not have any idea of what was really happening. I know now there is a God that I want to get to know more and have a relationship with him. Today, July 7, 2720, I committed my life to God, got anointed, giving everything to God, got slain in the spirit. What an experience. I felt like I was going through a tunnel of light, cried so hard. I felt his love and his presence. I want to get closer to him for me and my children. After this, I never spoke to my family for 17 years, and I called them today. I know God will heal that also. And she closed with, I love you, Jesus. Those of you who are outsiders and probably hearing for the first time that Jesus loves you, this is what can happen to you if you will just stop Assess your life and think of what God can do for you. He's no respecter of persons. What I find very amazing in these last few months, that just about every gay person who have heard us teach the Bible, read these scriptures, not only about homosexuality, of all the other sins, but almost all the gay people that have heard this want to get out of their lifestyle. And though it has been a struggle, they have stuck with it to make a commitment to change as Jesus will change them. And we need to pray for them. You may not know them by name. It is a struggle. But God has already given them new life. And as I said to you, young ones, Oh, this, this one is just a few hours old. She just got born again today, but she'd been listening. And already, there's so much healing. And Father, you know who this person is. I pray special blessings for her desire to want to encourage other people there who are hurting and who are wondering if it really works. She wants to say that trusting in Jesus really works. So we praise you, and we thank you, and we bless your name. Amen. Amen. But, you know, I'm going to have the scriptures because some of you asked me, you know, uh, one question was, I want to end my gay life, and I know God, and to get to know God and live for God only. Can you give me scriptures for that lifestyle and explain the scripture? So I explained the scripture, but Jimmy is going to read from Romans chapter 1. So if anybody ever challenges you, you know, because 
other churches or other preachers say it's okay. Let me tell you what. On the day of judgment, after we die and this whole world is over and our life is over, we have to go and be judged by this word. Not That's by right. what preacher so-and-so said or that church taught, by this word. And that's why we declare this word to set you free, not to make you feel miserable. In fact, everybody who has heard this word in the last few months who have been in this world lifestyle has said, help me, help me. I never really chose. I never really enjoyed. I want to get out. So this is the word of God, and Brother Jimmy is going to read that for us, and uh, we're going to then go on. Jimmy? From Romans 1, 24 to 28. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleansiness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worship and serve the cre creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lusts for one another. Men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to, de to be debased. God gave them over to be debased in mind, to do things which are not fitting. Well, there you are. If you insist on choosing, and let me say this, God in his love, in the Garden of Eden, after he had created man and made everything perfect, he wanted a love relationship. So he gave Adam and Eve a choice. And the Bible says, who we love, we serve, and we obey. Mm -hmm. And they had a choice. He says, mm -hmm. do not eat of this tree you can eat of everything else, but do not eat because, he says, if you eat from this tree, I'm telling you the consequence of it is you're going to surely die. Mm -hmm. See, sin and disobedience to God has consequences. People don't want to talk about consequences. Your ruined lives through homosexuality has consequences, and the consequences, so, so many of you are hurting so much. I just wish I could hug you. And, and love you as Jesus loves you and say, he will never leave you nor forsake you. He loves you just the way you are. And there's a scripture here, a question here that uh, is a little different, but this precious one says, and I like the honesty that you have. I'm glad that you can tell me whatever's on your heart. And of course, we don't disclose your name, so you can tell me. And I've been ministering so long that I've heard just about everything, so nothing shocks me. And, you know, before I got saved, I was a sinner, too. I was a good liar, as I told you. You know, I'm not proud of it. My sister said, you talk about it like you're proud of it. I said, no, I'm not proud of it. I'm making a point. We all have a favorite sin, right? And then, you know, I would run back to my bedroom. I said, God, help me not to lie. And, you know, every other day I would say, God, help me not to lie. And one day he says, Barbara, if you don't want to lie, you don't want to confess. Stop doing bad things and you don't have to lie. I said, good idea, God. <laughs> and you know what? It helped me. Just that revelation. God is so patient with us, right? And then this precious one said, I stole all my life. I did so many things that were not honoring to Jesus. But I'm learning. Oh, God, forgive me. I want you to memorize 1 John 1, 9. 1 John 1, 9. It's toward the end of the Bible. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Does it mean that you're not going to be tempted to sin or steal? Satan knows our weakness, so he's going to dangle that sin. And every once in a while, you might fall off the wagon as I did with my lying sin, you know. 
But let me tell you what. Remember, we're family, and when we get born again, we're like a little baby, and we're desiring the milk of the mm. word, yes. the milk of the word. And I say to people who are worried about failing Jesus, look at the baby, you know. Uh, just, you know, when we have little babies, and they're beginning to stand and walk, and we put them on the table, right? And they're wobbling like this, but we're so proud that they're beginning to walk, and they're walking, you know, kind of whatever, and we stand about three feet away, and we say, come, come. And the baby just looks at us and they're smiling and they don't know they're going to walk right off the table. We know, but we're there to catch. <laughs> I've never seen a parent to, to tease them and say, walk off the table, let them fall and break their neck. And that's how God is. He says, come, grow, grow, stronger, yes. stronger. I'll be there to catch you. So don't hesitate because you think you can't get rid of your sin. Once you confess your sin, it's forgiven and it's forgotten. Satan will remind you, but tell him the Bible says he's a liar. So he says, oh, you're a thief and you'll always be a thief. Just say to him, I rebuke you, Satan. You're a liar. And if you say I'm a thief, I'm not a thief because you're a liar. You know, that's how we get and move on. Okay. Well, I see Tracy and Marshall back, and we don't have the piano ready, but maybe you should at the end of this hour prepare something to sing because you're not going to be on Maui too long, and I don't think that will be a distraction for you to do that, and we can mic it later. But uh, your last song, which was not on the program, but you, you know, uh, sang it, blessed so many people. I'll rise again. It's that Easter song we sing, but it's not only for Easter. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was so powerful. So if you feel led by the Lord, they went pray, praying all over the island today, so they might be tired, but that will be a blessing okay, to us. So anyway, uh, so will Jesus forgive you? Oh, he keeps forgiving us. You know, <laughs> I said to Amen. people, and I think we preachers need to explain it more theologically, right? There are many words for sin and so forth, but the basic premise of the sin that leads to death is the sin of disobedience to God's word or the sin of rebelling against God. And rebelling is, of course, rejecting the free gift of eternal life, okay? But if you receive Christ and you're not rebelling, there's a sin we call in the Greek, harmatia sin, that means falling off the wagon, kind of. It's missing the mark, it means. Like, you know, there's a, a bullseye, and you try to shoot the arrow, and once in a while, you make it. But a lot of times, you miss before you make it, right? And so that's how the Christian life is. The more you try, the better you get at making the bullseye. And so pretty soon, if you're a thief, you're going to find you steal no more. In fact, you are going to be so good about spotting a thief. I tell our people, I was such a good liar. Don't lie to me because I can spot a liar. <laughs> So be careful if you say, you know, I didn't come to church because, oh boy, if it's not the truth, I know it. Okay, but anyway, so we are not going to stay in our sins. And if anybody boasts that they never fell off the wagon or they didn't make a mistake today, you know, just pray for them. Because I think as we grow in the Lord, as the light of Jesus gets brighter, we can see more of our defects, right? Amen. But anyway, um, somebody said, Pastor, when you go on Facebook, we want to see you up close. <laughs> and James laughed because he knew why we don't see me up close. I don't want you to see my defects. I don't want to have to comb my hair perfectly, you know, and have everything perfect. So kind of far, you know. <laughs> but when you get closer, you can see the defects. So as we get closer to Jesus, Jimmy, isn't that so? Oh, definitely. The defects we saw, the impurities we saw in our life, we can see not because God doesn't love us, but because he wants us to get more righteous as we mm. near heaven. Okay, mm. so for those of you who have any kind of pet sin right now, say this. Say, dear Jesus, help me in this area of temptation. Through your Holy Spirit, warn me before I get tempted mm -hmm. by the yes. devil yes. and make me strong 
so I can resist it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right well, somebody said, um, you know, I was in a religion and I didn't know how to pray and I didn't know what I was doing. So we're going to turn to John chapter 3. And Brother Jimmy is going to pray. We we call we used to call ourselves more the old fashioned way, Brother yeah, Jimmy, I sister, like it. because we're a I family. Like you know, yeah. now we get a little bit more modern and well, we're sophisticated. But anyway, <laughs> um, you know, and yeah, I don't want me. people calling me Sister Barbara because we we're all family in in the church. I'm pastor, but you know, but in John chapter three, a religious person came to Jesus because he knew that mm. religion did not save him. Yes. There was some emptiness. Jimmy, explain to them what you said about that, you know, what you told us to get an app for last night, because all of them may be able to get sure. that. Tell them a little about how they can get it and, and a little bit about Nicodemus that you're going to read Oh, about. I'd love yes. to. Um, it's being really um, on Facebook as well as on YouTube. The series is called The chosen. The chosen is a depiction of scripture on Jesus Christ and his disciples and the life he lived with especially Nicodemus. Nicodemus was depicted as, um, as an individual who had a true heart for God and as he was really a Pharisee of Pharisees which a leader he had a still a gentle heart to desire God's will. And how the chosen, the, the episodes show Nicodemus is one really desiring to search for who is God. And the miracles that Jesus was performing and as Nicodemus was talking to him, Nicodemus was an individual with a passion having the knowledge within his mind, the word of scripture within his mind, but being revealed the truth of the word. Okay, Jimmy, I don't want you to reveal everything about Nicodemus because, you know, we don't want to, you know, we want to keep them. But you know what? I was so impressed when you say, oh. tell them about how they portrayed Jesus. Oh. Or how it blessed you. And then we have to do this because we're... Sure. Jesus was portrayed really as a person, first of all, who loved children. He was one who did things for them, like making um, gifts like a, a little horse, but a personality that had such a, such a loving, gentle personality. Because he but, was brought up as, as a carpenter, right? Exactly. He was, his stepfather, Joseph, was yes. a carpenter, and you said... He, it was so human. It, it was not oh, like so true. he's a god and came here oh, to save. Oh, so us. true. But he was so could be kind of like your daddy, right? If you were I a little would kid, right? Definitely yeah. depict yes. that. And um, he was a person that, especially with the men, he was uh, a person that would kind of just talk to them in ways that uh, uh, a person would talk to, having a like a, a friendly conversation. He kidded around with them. Some of the things he told them kind of really made them think. He said, expect the difference. So in life that the Jesus was um, in the depiction of the, of the chosen, they really showed him as a man. Mm -hmm. A man that had, had skills in his work. A man that had, had wisdom in his conversation. And yet a man who was gentle and loving, mm -hmm. especially with the little ones. Amen. Read what he said to Nicodemus when Nicodemus... From John 3, 1 through 15. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, 
unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said that you, that you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it. But you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you a teacher of Israel? And do you not know these things? Most assuredly I say to you, We speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? For no one has ascended into heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen. And you know, read it over again after this is over, before you sleep, so you can really digest it. It says, the Gospel of John, verse 3, but it tells you how God loves you. He loves everyone, and he has given us a choice of choosing eternal life or not, and so he gives us, because he loves us, the power to choose, okay? So, you know, we want um, the Michaels to sing for us, so I'm going to ask Carol and Jimmy in closing our part, tomorrow night I'll speak more about the Spirit of God. And when we're born again, we cannot be born without the Spirit of God mm. working in us to convict totally. us of our sins, okay? If he does, if the Holy Spirit doesn't come to needle us, we think we're okay, right? <laughs> you thought you were okay until yeah. the Holy Spirit started working on you, right? Then you repented of your sin, you received Christ, you got filled with the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to explain that tomorrow night. But both of them came from a cultural religion, and uh, we'll have Carol share first about her search for God and her need to be born again. Let me tell you this. If you want to go to heaven, this is the chapter that says you must be born again. So if anybody comes knocking on your door or, or wherever you are and tries to teach your religion, just ask them, are you born again? <laughs> Can you teach me how to be born again? Because the Bible says in order to go to heaven, I must be born again. They may have arguments. They may say they read or they have the, their own Bible or whatever. But the Bible says you must be born again. So, Carol, tell us, and a lot of people know your story already, but tell us shortly so we have time for Jimmy to tell how you search for the Lord and what being born again truly means to you. Celebration. <laughs> um, very well, before you start, we got Maui High, Baldwin High, and St. Anthony <laughs> represented at the table. So we're looking for... Go, Maui High. Go. <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, so I'm going to make it really short. So um, when I was searching, and I came from a very cultural religion, um, Sorry, it comes to my heart. But anyway, never let um, 
God never lets you down. Don't count on what man tells you. Because my experience was going to an authority person and told me to go see my psychiatrist. And that really, I mean, I told him I was suicidal that night. And he told me to go see my psychiatrist at midnight, you know? So anyway, but for years, I looked at that individual and I blamed, I blamed him. And I learned, I, I learning after being born again, don't count on what men say or, or anybody. Trust in the Lord. And you have to empty yourself. You have to lay down everything. Because God knows everything anyway. Even if you're thinking it. He knows everything. Then you will, go, you will be in the same place I am. You, I had to be born again of my old self. And I don't know. I never asked Pastor and Howard. Was it heavy when I went down? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. But anyway... I just know, continue what you're doing. Everything that you do, just give it to the Lord. You trip, stand up, give it to the Lord. Okay. Amen. For myself, I was uh, an individual who was broken in, uh, in shambles. And then I met Jesus. But I met Jesus through individuals. Um, um, the primary individuals that I met was my... Uh, was my brother-in-law Ray and my sister Paulette. She introduced me to a, a group of men called the Full Gospel Businessmen. And these men were really authentic men of, of their um, careers and their, their occupations. But what it was was that it allowed me to talk with them on um, situations of, of being so um, desperate. And being desperate I was raised in a very good family, a dad who showed his love. But one thing that I was, did not, um, and I, it's really my fault, I did not come to the value of Holy Scripture. Scripture was not part of me. But when I came with the full gospel businessmen, they, these men surrounded me with their careers, but their testimonies. And their testimonies was all centered around the word of God. Scripture became alive to them. So as I talked with them, I wanted to know more about scripture. And then as I started to start reading scripture and coming to uh, with Pastor Barbara and her mom that I identify as my mama Tengan and her dad, Pastor Shuichi, and her, her sister, June and Victor, I was surrounded by a real a family that had a um, deep understanding for the value of the word of God and a commitment to the word of God. So with that, I grew, I understood. I understood this. One, I must have value friends who would value me. And not to say, not to say better, no, is that there are certain individuals that will really uphold and and, and challenge you in a way that your life will develop and grow. So as I grew in the Lord, scriptures became alive. Um, not only scriptures, but my lifestyle. Um, valued work, valued the family, valued, even valued my marriage to a, to a, to a deep, deepest passion. Though it wasn't reciprocal, it was still valued by God. And because of that and the family that here at the church, it, it made me realize that the scripture and, the, and, and being born again, coming to the knowledge of scripture, coming to, to faith, and then realizing that the spirit of God is truly my best friend. We talk in ways that he protects me, he guides me, he laughs with me. But as being born again, it made me realize the value of how God so loved Jimmy 
that he gave Jesus and he gave his Holy Spirit to dwell in Jimmy. And that's how I look at it. Well, Jimmy, you know, there's some who asked, you know, they're religious and, <laughs> you know, came from the religion that you came from. Mm -hmm. And they want to know what actually happened. So could you say the prayer with them? And in a prayer of confession, we need to admit, humble ourselves and say we are sinners. When we say that, we have let the Holy Spirit judge us here. And when we believe that Jesus took the punishment for our sins and gives us eternal life, when we die, or Jesus should come, you know, we're going to heaven because we have gotten rid of our sins Amen. through Jesus' sacrifice. And the second part of the prayer is then to personally invite Jesus. Jesus will not invade your life without your invitation. So we close with an invitation. And then after you do that in leading them slowly, then I will close with, you know, um, just saying a prayer of blessing over them. And those of you who have any more questions, write it down, text it to us or call us. And then tomorrow night I'll answer more questions and I'll answer more of the Bible scriptures uh, that you sent in. So we'll continue tomorrow night. But uh, Jimmy, talk to those that, are of different religions, but they don't yet have their relationship, and they want to. So yes. you lead them. You have the privilege of saying that prayer with them. And Thank you. Close. Thank you, Pastor. Heavenly Father, as individuals come to hear about different things which within what we're talking about, some hear religion of what was talked to them in various areas of their life. Others hear things that we're speaking about with maybe relationships with individuals or, or, or um, someone that was part of it. But Lord, the way you did it for us was to re reveal to us that through the word. And in Romans 3.23 it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You reveal this to us through scripture. And you reveal it in Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is everlasting life to Jesus Christ. You identify our failures from the very beginning. Where man in the conception of sin. We carry it. I carry it. But in this sin, we need to confess it. But your gift, Father God, your gift in giving us Jesus made religion really not only explode away, but it made us reveal or being revealed how you gave such a loving Savior, which is your Son, for God so loved the world. And I like to say it this way. I said it in the past. Scripture can only be impacted by an individual if you take scripture and say, first person, me or Jimmy. For God so loved Jimmy. And you put your name. For God so loved, say your name, that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus. That as, say your name, Jimmy, say your name, believes upon Jesus, Jimmy, say your name, will have, will not suffer the consequences of sin, but Jimmy, say your name, will have everlasting life with Jesus Christ and the values and privileges that God has given to us, not only in heaven, but right now here on earth, as his child to become a child of God, and he becomes your Abba, your Daddy. May the Lord bless you and stir within you a desire to, more, to know more about Jesus and being born again.
And Father, we thank you for writing their names now as they confess their sins. They've passed from death unto life, and all heaven is rejoicing. You said all the angels come out. So confirm through your Holy Spirit this new birth. Yes, Lord. Let the joy of the Lord be their strength, that the burden of sin be broken and lifted. May they feel cleansed and empowered through the Holy Spirit. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to close now, and the Michaels are going to close out with a wonderful praise, a worship song. And we will see you tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, and we will answer your questions. So God bless you. We love you, and Jesus loves you even more. Amen. 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 God bless you, Brother Amen. Sister Michaels. Amen. All right. Kind of figured this was a special request, so... <laughs> So we'll do rise again. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad he did? Go ahead. Drive the nails in my hands. Laugh at me where you stand. Go ahead and say it isn't me, the day will come when you will see, cause I'll rise again. There's no power on earth can keep me down, yes I'll Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and mock my name, my love for you is still the same. Go ahead and bury me, but very soon I will be free, cause I'll rise again. There's no power that can tie me down. Yes, I'll rise again. Death can't keep me in the ground. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead. Say I'm dead and gone, but you will see that you were wrong. Go ahead, try to hide the sun, but all will see that I won, cause I'll Keep me back. Yes, yes I'll come again. I come to take my people back. Yes, I'll come again. There's no power on earth can keep me back. Yes, I'll come again. Come to take my people back. Come to take my people back. Come to take 
my people back. God bless you, everyone. See you tomorrow night. Love you and have a blessed evening. Aloha.